Hey, what's up guys? Your average war gamer is back with another video of World of Warships. And today I'm going to answer this simple question and that is what are the strongest tech tree lines that you should be grinding right now in World of Warships? In 2024, what are those best destroyers or cruisers and even battleships that you should be grinding? Uh, this answer is going to be pretty much in this video and if you do like this content and if you do find this video very valuable please like and comment especially comment me down below what are your thoughts and opinion about these tech tree lines so let's just get to that stuff shall we okay so the first line as a destroyer player if you like destroyers i would definitely like that you should be grinding this uk destroyer line that is daring i would say this line is very very much easy for new players to not only grind but also you they will be very much comfortable with their short smokes and the gimmicks that they have i think they are very good not only torpedo boats but they are also very good gun boats so you do have the blessing of both of the uh you know characteristics which is torpedoes as well as the gun power uh, let me explain a bit more about it by the use of this destroyer daring so you can see i have daring in my port and this is easily by far very easiest line to grind for new players especially because the reason why i would say that the daring line is recommended is because of these short smokes these smokes if you are a new player you will help you know a lot by smoking yourself up against those enemies the enemy destroyers and you can just disengage like that and you do also have hydroacoustic search which means that torpedoes are not going to be that big of an issue since these torpedoes will be detected around three kilometers so there is going to be very less chance of eating torpedoes because usually when you are a new player you will have this very much vulnerability in taking a lot of torpedoes so you can see here that the detection of torpedoes is three kilometer and you also have very long you know action time which really helps as well as for a destroyer you also have heal so you can have at least three heals and even more depending if you do have this Andrew Cunningham commander. The daring will be an absolute best pick if you are new World of Warship player or maybe even experienced. I think you should be grinding this line out as soon as possible because this is one of the best destroyer line that you can grind in World of Warships. So you can see you also have torpedoes 10 kilometer you know that's a lot of torpedoes they have decent damage very good detection on torpedoes they won't be detected very easily on cruisers and battleships and you do also have really good guns you have 2.3 seconds of reload time with six of these guns so the damage per output or damage per minute i would say is fantastic you do have smokes you can farm them you can disengage and then you will have smoke back again very very quickly within no time and you can just smoke up quickly and you do have also really decent concealment considering the firepower and the torpedoes that that it has you have six kilometer direction very good maneuverability okay entire defense i won't say it's really good but at least you do have smokes to disengage against aircraft carriers because that's also a bit of a problem and you don't have good entire defense and obviously you do also have very strong very very strong depth charges against a submarine and obviously once you have this hydro you can easily spot the submarines even at, at maximum depth and you will have a lot much more easier time in daring so definitely very very good line to grind first destroyer that i would recommend right now okay so the second line that i would recommend after daring it has to be gdansk i would say gdansk is one of my favorite uh, destroyer line it is uh, based on pan uh, sorry not uh, pan european if i'm not wrong yeah so it is pan european destroyer line as you can see you do have two lines one is torpedo boat destroyer line and second is the sort of a gunboat hybrid just like daring you know uh, destroyer line which is gdansk now gdansk i would say this line is definitely worth it if you are looking to have this solid experience of good gun power and also have smokes and also have really good torpedo power like holland but having shorter torpedo range i will explain it a bit in this video so you can see here you do have seven guns and they have very good shell velocity like the gun you know have a very easy shells that you can land on a target so it's not going to be a difficulty you know facing when even though you are shooting at around 14.4 kilometers you do have really good fire chance on these guns 10 percent, which is really nice so definitely a very good you know gunboat destroyer but you also do have just like daring 
torpedoes that are 10 km but obviously it has a bit of a different uh, characteristics it only has he shells okay it does not have ap shells like daring okay and uh, that's one of the things that i would mention for sure anti defense again similarly like daring and its concealment is a bit worse i would say a lot worse uh, in this uh, Gdansk, but you do have something which is pretty interesting and that is you do have surveillance radar so surveillance radar does help a lot in spotting those destroyers whenever you get spotted and you can have this very reduced cooldown time at around 60 seconds so once you pop the radar it only lasts for very short 10 seconds but then you will pop the radar again after at least 57 seconds which is very nice you again unlike daring have engine boost and you do also have smokes you can farm them pretty easily and you can even farm them at long ranges so if you started to like the destroy lines you can just uh, use that range pretty decent range with the captain build you can use it and just farm them around 14 13 kilometers and you will have no issues even if you don't use smoke so that is very very nice thing about the gdansk very very solid destroyer if you want to get the very good experience and not only that you do also going to have very high game impact as well since destroyers are very stealthy they contest the caps very quickly and they will win the games eventually and that's why i would like kitansk as well okay so another destroyer line is going to be french tier 10 line so that is Kleber. this destroyer line is absolutely insanely powerful you have access to well main battery reload booster which is a game changer because well even though you can see that the reload time is not like daring levels it is 5.9 seconds of reload time its gun power is still very good as you can see here the damage per output is still damage per minute i would say it's pretty good you do have eight guns this time but you don't have smoke but again you do have 13.6 kilometer firing range which is like base firing range so you don't need to use the range or anything like that or you can even increase it up to like 15-ish kilometers if you want to be a lot much more comfortable farming battleships because again just like Gdansk their shell velocity is almost pretty much similar and you will have no issues landing those shells on the target so you just basically go at long ranges and farm them uh, it does also have very interesting thing unlike any other destroyer in the game if you take damage in this destroyer well uh, after a certain period of time you will get reduced damage because uh, you know the hull you know the saturation mechanics in this game will be such for especially that destroyer that it will take less damage once it has taken uh, you know quite some damage uh, at the start of the game or i would say during some time it will take less damage over time i would just make it very simple i don't want to make it complicated because it's a interesting mechanic but overall its potential hp is definitely higher than other destroyers you can see it's 25000 only which is already very impressive but that is seems to be pretty much theoretical practically it has a bit more hp because of these saturation mechanics so you will take less damage once you are sort of you know having half hp in that destroyer which is very nice you do also have torpedoes now you do have insanely fast reloading torpedoes you have 8 km torpedo range which is you know might not be that impressive considering you also have really terrible uh, concealment like considering your torpedo range is pretty poor like 7.8 and 8 kilometers like very like 2 or 0.2 seconds of buffer like you can just wiggle a uh, wiggle in around between and that's basically where you just send the torpedoes so but the thing is that you can yolo battleships or even cruisers if they are around the islands because the saturation mechanic does help a lot and you do have very hard hitting torpedoes as you can see they have 18,400 damage you already have amazing guns and even though you don't have smoke you can just easily farm them in ranges and there will be no issues whatsoever combined with the fact that just like i said it also has main battery reload booster and does have speed boost and by the way they have insanely high speeds like 46.2 knots of speed that is insanely high you do also have 20 percent increase in speed by the use of engine boost which increases it up to around 55 knots if i'm not wrong which is already insane so it's going to be very very difficult for a lot of ships to hit at long ranges clever is going to be like fast and easy boy that just want to farm ships and ships like crazy and you do also have main battery reload booster to kill those destroyers if you want to at close ranges it is an amazing destroyer no matter what very good pick after daring and gdansk
Okay, so coming back to some cruisers. What are the best cruisers? What are the best tech tree cruisers that you should be grinding right now? And I would say in terms of heavy cruiser lines, the cruiser that does have slightly better armor compared to light cruisers, I would say the first line that you should be grinding in heavy cruisers, and it's going to be a lot much more friendlier for new players, is going to be the Petropavlos line. Now, you can grind it in, you know, USSR line. You can go and basically grind this whole thing from here and get to Tallinn, Riga, and Petropavlos. These are heavy cruiser line. This is light cruiser line. But let's talk about Petropavlos quickly because that is one of the most strongest cruiser that you can get in the game. Okay, so we have this Petro. So what Petro does have, which makes it very interesting and why I would recommend it to grind as a tech tree cruiser. Now you can see here, you do have only three cross three guns, which means nine of them, 220 millimeter guns, definitely very, you know, it's okay caliber for a cruiser. But the thing about the Petro Pavlovsk is that its armor is definitely very, very insane for a heavy cruiser. And let me show this armor real quick. You can see here, 40 millimeter deck, 40 millimeter side armor, and you do also have very thick torpedo belt. Uh, sorry, the you know, you can say citadel armor belt, which is very nice. And the armor profile is such that it's, you know, it's sort of like thin armor profile. And once you are bowing in, in this heavy cruiser, it's going to be very difficult to take this down because of this armor scheme. 40 millimeter means that a lot of the battleship shells, like literally no battleship shell can simply overmatch it or basically pen through. Like even Yamato with 460 millimeter guns or even Satsuma at 510 millimeter guns cannot do anything whatsoever. So the armor is very good when bowing. Obviously, when you're going to be get, getting some broadside, like if someone shoot you at broadside, then it's going to be certainly vulnerable. But that's basically the thing against every cruiser. But in this case, it is still relatively tanky, even broadside. Like light cruisers cannot penetrate this armor with its AP shells. And that's why Petro Pavlos is very good and sort of a new player friendly, I would say, if you are started to understanding how Cruiser works. You have also very, very insane guns. Now, the reload time might not look that good considering it's a Cruiser, but the penetration of AP, armor piercing shells, is such that it has almost comparable 300, like comparable like battleship caliber gun you know, AP penetration damage. Like I'm talking about 380 millimeter guns penetration damage that you can actually get from these 220 millimeter guns Petro Pavlovsk. That is insane. It also have improved AP angles, which means that even though the ships are a bit angled more than normal ships, then, or, or even then they will be easily getting citadels with their AP shells. AT shells damage per minute is not impressive, but still it is not too bad either. You do also have very solid anti-defense, as if I can show you the consumables, you do also have radar. 12km radar means you can counter destroyers, which is very much again friendly for new players in World of Warships. Definitely, that's the reason why I would like Petro Pavlos to be the first pick, I would say. You do also have a hydro, so protection against torpedoes or defensive air fire to get extra protection against aircraft carriers. You do also have heals, which is very nice. And combined with the fact that if you use the legendary mod, which again, uh, experienced players know in World of Warships that how powerful this legendary mod is, it will increase the characteristics of already bonkers AP penetration and you know the dispersion even more insane and petro has become easily one of the best you know tech tree cruisers in this game to grind and have it in your port definitely very very worthy ship if you want to grind this it will just do wonders decent hp pool as well you can see here it is really solid ship regardless the concealment might not impress you but it is for a heavy cruiser not that bad either because there are some cruisers that does have slightly more worse concealment but well Petro is solid, that's for sure. Okay, so another heavy cruiser line that I would definitely recommend is going to be from the Italian line, which is going to be Venezia. So let me explain Venezia very quickly here. So you can see I have Venezia in my port and well, it is very different because it does have not itchy shells, which means you can set fires, but they have slightly more better alpha compared to AG shells and does have improved penetration angles, which means that even though the ships are a bit more angled, you will still going to get some penetration damage. Or I would say a lot much more consistent in penetration damage since, well, they won't set fires, which is kind of a downside, but the alpha damage you can see here, it is very, very nice. And you do have a lot of guns in Venezia. You have 15 of the guns 
which makes it even more absurd. The reload time is relatively high, but then you do have 15 guns, just like I said. Well, if you hit that, you know, alpha damage or sap damage onto a broadside battleship, you will soon realize how much damage you can pump out after 18.5 seconds, which is insane already. Also, combined with the fact that it also have very interesting consumable, which is exhaust smoke generator, which means that if you smoke up, you can just move across to the you know map easily while smoking up, while disengaging. I mean, you just keep moving in Venezia and the smoke will just completely cover you regardless because the smoke works like that in Venezia. It's, and that's why it's called exhaust smoke generator. It will basically allow the ship to remain undetected while you are moving at full speed, which is very nice. You do also a spotter plane, which means increasing more range because the range might not look that impressive at 17.1 kilometer. You do also have heal as well as if you don't like submarines in World of Warships, Venezia have now access to submarine surveillance. So if submarines are around seven kilometers, you can spot them even if they are maximum depth for 20 seconds, which is also very good so venetia i would say having a lot of tools to deal with sorry deal with a lot of ship ship types they can just absolutely smash destroyers i mean uh, if you have even tried venetia or if i mean if you are thinking of getting venetia and if you're tired of uh, you know seeing destroyers showing broadside and you're just not getting that much damage try venetia once and you will realize that you can even death strike them in just one salvo which is insane you do also have torpedoes and well your entire defense again it's not going to be impressive but still, it's okay because you do have smokes, you can disengage at will, which is very nice. You do have, you know, in my build, the concealment is pretty high. But if you just make it a good concealment bit, it's, it's going to be around 12 point something kilometer, which is pretty okay. It's better than Petro Pavlovs, that's for sure. And obviously, you do have these, uh, you know, get out of jail cards out of a smoke generator. So that does help a lot. I mean, combined with the fact that if you do use legendary mod, it becomes an absolutely insane cruiser that have so much disengage ability by using five smokes. So yeah, that's basically what I would say for Venezia. Try it out yourself. Definitely you will enjoy playing Venezia. Okay, now coming up to the light cruiser line. If you are a bit more focusing towards high risk sort of cruisers that are very, very vulnerable, their armor might look kind of trash. But the thing is, their gunpower is going to be pretty insane and they are very interesting in terms of its gameplay. And I would say the cruiser that I would recommend to grind, which is really fun to play as well, is going to be the Minotaur. I mean, it is really, really powerful British cruiser at tier 10, light cruiser at tier 10. So you can see I have Minotaur right in my port. You can see it does not have that insane HP because it's a light cruiser, but you do have insane 10 guns that have 2.8 seconds of reload time. That is insane. I mean, your DPM is just absolutely bonkers. You can see here, you have 600,081, like 681,000 AP DPM. I mean, you just try to shoot these, um, you know, volleys consistently on battleships and you will just eat them in just a couple of seconds. I can tell you that they, the AP uh, shells have interesting characteristics where they will have a lot much more easier time penetrating no matter what. Even if they are angled on the superstructure, you can just farm them with these. You only have AP shells, not HE shells, but the AP penetration and no, AP penetration is not really good. But AP characteristics are such that uh, you can easily even penetrate destroyers like reduced arming threshold and you know those characteristics that would or, or and you also have improved AP pen, pen angles which basically makes it even really really strong against destroyers on broadside cruisers if they show broadside you do also have smokes you do also have super heals super heals increasing the survivability of minotaur a lot if you take a lot of damage you can heal 50 percent of citadel damage you do also have hydro if you want to basically make destroy life hell, you can also switch to surveillance radar, but you are going to play it very, very risky because if you show broadside in a Minotaur, you're going to die very quickly. You can see here the armor is very, very bad. Armor profile, you can see here it's gigantic citadel armor, so don't expect a lot. If you broadside, you're going to get smashed. But again, you can always switch to smoke and basically make life hell for battleships and cruisers if you position yourself correctly do have torpedoes as well 16 torpedoes eight on each side 10 kilometer very very nice you do also have very very good entire uh, entire defense i mean compared to all other 
tier 10 cruisers, I think Minotaur does have decent anti-defense compared to them. I mean, even though the CVs can still strike you regardless, but again, you will shoot down more planes. That's what I can say. You do have decent maneuverability for a light cruiser, and you also have very good concealment. So Minotaur is a really, really strong pick. If you want to grind this tech tree line, definitely you will find it very enjoyable. I talked about this pretty much clearly. You do have insane amount of potential to heal. So, I mean, if you, even if you take massive damage and if you don't get death strike, well, you can heal back significant amount of HP by using super heal. So definitely pretty much worthy to grind at this moment. Okay, so coming up to the battleships line, which tech tree lines are going to be the best to grind right now in World of Warships? And I would say Yamato will never going to get old. I would say ever going to get old, even in 2024. It's been released like nine years ago since the game, or at least eight years ago since the game just started. Or at least, uh, you know, the live servers are running. Yamato is probably one of the best battleships that you can still grind right now. And it is very, very powerful. Like, Yamato is a historical battleship. It is amazing to watch, like right now in my board. It is absolutely amazing for a historical guy. Like, I'm not a historical guy, but Yamato is so, so beautiful. You can see here, you do also have 97,000 HP. Very good and decent HP, I would say. Torpedo protection is some of the best for a battleship at tier 10. Like, 55%, you won't get it on other tier 10 battleship, to be honest. Which is insane. So, you know, torpedoes are almost going to chunk like half. Like, their damage simply going to get slapped half if they hit onto the torpedo belt. As you can see here, you do have 9 460 millimeter guns. They have overmatch capabilities, which means that even if you just hit on the bow on a battleship, you can just simply penetrate it without thinking of whether they will bounce or not. They will just simply going to penetrate and they will just do massive damage. The alpha damage is very nice. You can see here 14,800 and you do have pretty, pretty good guns. Dispersion is very, very nice. 2.1 Sigma means accuracy is also very good. And well, even though you can say that the entire defense is some of the weak, uh, in this game, I would say definitely entire defense is definitely not on par compared to other battleships But you do have heals which is nice normal heals nothing too special But you do also have spotter plane and if you really don't like again CVs I mean there is a bit of a way to counter them which is fighters They will shoot down some planes, but don't expect much your entire still going to be poor regardless So you can see here you do have decent concealment. I didn't build it for concealment, but you can get it up to like 14.1 seconds Maneuverability is pretty terrible. There is no way. Maneuverability is really bad. Rudder shift, you can see here, it's absolutely garbage to 22 seconds. So yeah, that's where Yamato does suffer, but it's a heavy, heavy battleship. What are you expecting, right? But the, the thing is that it is a really long range sniper. You do have insanely good range, like 26 kilometer. Very good shell velocity on the guns. They hit hard. The dispersion is nice. You can also use legendary mod if you want to. Legendary mod, you can get it and purchase it in an armory. It is really good. You get better dispersion as well if you use it. It is a really good battleship for new players, guys. If you are looking to buy a battleship, that does perform amazing. Uh, if you are looking to have uh, this sniper, you know, ability to, you know, just uh, uh, drop the heaviest salvo on them, Yamato delivers just fine, even in 2024. Okay, so another line that I would definitely going to recommend is going to be British Tier 10 Battleship St. Vincent. Now, it is an alternate line to Conqueror. Conqueror used to have uh, this King of Ichi spam or Firepower of Ichi. It used to be the most annoying ship in the game, and but, but St. Vincent now have kind of replaced the Conqueror in terms of its firepower and, you know, actually interesting characteristics, which makes sense with St. Vincent even better than Conqueror. You can see here, you do have almost 18,000 HP, which is slightly less than Conqueror, but it is pretty good. Conqueror, you can you can go and check it out. It's a tier 10 cruise, uh, sorry, battleship. Uh, you do have nine guns, but uh, compared to Conqueror's 419 millimeter guns, you do have 457 millimeter guns, which means with this AP, you can overmatch easily cruisers, even though they have 30 millimeter armor plating. Simply penetrate the cruisers, even if they are angled, whatever the reason, whatever the thing they are doing, you're just going to smash them regardless. They have battle cruiser dispersion with 1.7 Sigma, which means a lot of decent accuracy. Very, very good guns. 457 meter guns. It's pretty good. The AG shells are also interestingly insane because just like Conqueror, these have 
63% fire chance. Yeah, Conquerors have 48% fire chance. Uh, the St. Vincent has 63% fire chance. So every shell most likely going to set fires on battleships. Even though their alpha damage might not look that impressive. I mean, Conqueror has, you know, better alpha damage than St. Vincent's 457mm guns, but they are still really, really good. Now, the thing about the St. Vincent is that its armor profile might not look that good compared to Conqueror. Conqueror also have, you know, not really good armor, but you can see here, there is a bit of a difference, which is 40mm armor thickness, which means that at least you can bow tank like Petro Pavlos, just like I said before, in heavy cruisers, this will help a lot in bouncing those shells. They will not going to overmatch you, and that's what helps a lot in San Vincent. Even though you do have very big superstructure at the back, you do also have 25mm bow and stern, which means, again, they can overmatch you like cruisers. Cruisers also have 25mm bow and stern, so it's kind of like a battle cruiser San Vincent, but more or less, it also have very interesting thing, which is just like Conqueror, because I'm directly comparing it, uh, Conqueror used to be the best ship, I would say, in terms of those uh, firepower capabilities. You do also have super heals like Conqueror on San Vincent. You do also have speed boost. You do also have defensive AF fire. So a lot much more better characteristics, I would say, compared to Conqueror. Defensive AF fire does help a lot. I would say a lot against uh, aircraft carriers. So definitely, the guns perform really well. Now, San Vincent also have a very interesting thing, which is torpedoes yeah this also have torpedoes now these torpedoes does almost 30,000 damage and the torpedoes work such that uh, if you are bowing in like this and if the ship is coming like this like la 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 okay now if you send the torpedoes they will come like this they will come like this and they will just hit those torpedoes which are uh, which basically it's an instant throwing at the front of that so yeah I mean, go, you can go and check out yourself. I'm not going to be posting that replay, San Vincent, un unless you want to see San Vincent replay. Uh, I mean, it is really, really powerful. I have to say, this have really good speed, really good guns. A lot of things are good. Close quarters, you do have these insane torpedoes. They are also game changer against battleships if they are pushing you. Yeah, definitely a very good choice as a Tech 3 battleship line. Okay, so the last but not the least battleship in my list is going to be the tier 10 Schlieffen. The German, you know, battle cruiser that I would say is hilariously powerful at mid to close ranges. I mean, if you, if you haven't tried out this battleship, I mean, you are missing out on a ton of fun once the secondary start to pop out. Now, it's not about the guns. It's not about the sniping power or capabilities. It's really, really about these secondaries which are unlike any anything in the game these secondaries are absolute bonkers now the thing about the german battleships is that they do have improved penetration based like it has 32 millimeter armor penetration on these 105 millimeter guns very small caliber yet 32 millimeter armor pen it's kind of crazy so you can just penetrate battleships and cruisers with ease you will do a lot of damage on their superstructure. I mean, you can just go and check that out, man. This is absolutely powerful. Of a, it is a powerhouse of a battleship. Honestly, 150mm guns having even more penetration. So you can even penetrate 40mm armor extremities, which is insane. You do also have 420mm guns. Very good reload time of 25, 27 seconds. So it's not like the guns are going to be weak. They have battle cruiser dispersion as well. So Schlieffen guns does absolutely amazing things to be honest on broadside so the guns are really good the secondary is having insane range you can see uh, if i can show you the secondaries have 12.5 kilometer range which is very nice so you can just easily go and just brawl a battleship cruiser destroyer whenever you have a chance to push because pushing in this game is not going to be easy if you're a new player but once you understand the timing and you have to push under certain scenarios, the Schlieffen will absolutely going to do wonders. And I'm, I'm saying it's just going to be doing really, really good job at close quarters. You do also have supportive torpedoes. Now, if you have come up across the battleship quickly, and if it started to get a around your broadside, because, by the way, the broadside does very well, uh, it's a bit more vulnerable, you're going to get Citadel if you don't angle it enough. So the thing is, if the battleship try to push you, well, you do also have 16 torpedoes, even though they do have 15 knots of speed. But remember, these torpedoes go around 13.5 kilometers. So you can just send torpedoes for, for no reason, and you can still get some torpedo hits or e on even a destroyer, which is absolutely hilarious to watch. Your anti-defense, 
I'm not gonna say it's really good. Um, it, it's just average. So uh, in in CV games, I would say the Schlieffen does a bit suffers. But again, your concealment is the star of the show. 12.6 kilometer concealment. 12.5 kilometer secondary means if any cruiser or battleships just spot you instantly, any cruiser that gets spotted. Any battleship that gets spotted, your secondary will just going to murder him. And I'm telling you, if you haven't tried out Schlieffen, especially with Gunther Luthiens, like Gunther Luthiens, if I can show you Gunther Luthiens right qui uh, really quickly, this is the captain that is really built for Schlieffen, man. Try this out yourself and you will find out because Gunther Luthiens does have even more alpha, sorry, not alpha damage, but secondary battery load time by minus 15%. If you have 100 shell, secondary shell hits on a target. Insane. You can go and check that out. You will find Schlieffen to be a ton of fun. Even though the HP might not be impressive. The armor might not be really impressive. Either. You can see here it also have 27 millimeters of armor extremities. But you do have this armor. Uh, which means that you won't be getting Citadel from the bow. 60 millimeter armor does ensure that. So it is still pretty relatively tanky. You can see here the armor still have 50 millimeter area so the superstructure is not like crazy big so i can just say go and just play that ship man if you haven't tried that ship out you're missing out in one of the most fun battleships in this entire game for mid to close quarters so that's basically about my 333 of the ships for each ship class which is destroyers cruisers and battleships i hope you like this video i will put some honorable mentions which are if you have grinded those Three, three, three lines for all ship classes, at least, uh, except uh, CVs and submarines. Well, you can also go and grind Nevsky or even Des Moines from cruiser perspective. Like these cruisers are really, really good. But I would say grind those lines first because uh, because those are really, really good. These are also really good. I have no issues about that whatsoever. They also will perform well in battleships. I would say Vermont is also really, really powerful. You can go and check that out as well. Vermont does absolutely smashes. You do have so many guns. You have 12 guns. Insane alpha damage. I mean, you have to check that out yourself. Once you do have grinded out those lines, which I have previously mentioned. So keep watching that. I mean, you also have Grozovoy, another good Russian destroyer. You can grind that out. You also have Shimakaze. But there are a lot of ships out there in World of Warship, guys. But the ships that I have explained to you in this video very, very in detail are the ones that you should be grinding right now in World of Warships, then you can just start to think about these ships as well because you will eventually yourself find out which ships are gonna be good after that. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you like this content and if you do find it very useful because I have spent some decent time in researching myself and finding out the best ships that you can grind in 2024 and these are I would say really really good. You can go and even go for the torpedo line. I haven't talked about torpedo boat lines in a, in a destroyer. Someone would say, ah, oh, you just forgot the Shimokaze. Shimokaze is my favorite destroyer in World of Warships. I get it. I get it. But it's not going to be easy for new players to grind. Or, you know, it's not easy for torpedo boats to work in World of Warships. Remember that. So this is the reason why I won't say Shimokaze is really good. But it's really good if you are experienced, that's for sure. Experience comes into play very much, at least in terms of this, these lines, these torpedo board lines. So thank you guys. And I will catch you guys into the next one. And please comment me down below if you have any comment whatsoever. And I will definitely love to answer that. So peace out.